Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the RSC Step Attenuator. In this presentation, we'll provide a short practical introduction to configuring and using the main features of Rodian Schwartz RSC Series Step Attenuators. We'll begin with a general overview. The Rodian Schwartz RSC is a family of switchable mechanical step attenuators. The frequency limit, attenuation range, and step sizes vary by model, but the maximum attenuation range is 0 to 139 dB, and the minimum step size is 0 0.1 dB. Switching time is less than 30 milliseconds, and repeatability of the configured attenuation values is very high. The maximum input power is plus 30 dBm, or 1 watt for CW signals, but up to 200 watts for pulse signals, less than 10 microseconds in duration. In terms of durability, the RSC is rated for well over a million switching cycles. In addition to a simple GUI and front panel controls, the RSC can also be configured and operated over LAN, USB, and GPIB interfaces. And as we'll see later in this presentation, the RSC can also control up to four additional external step attenuators. Let's start by looking at the most important keys on the front panel of the RSC. The green Preset button is used to set the RSC back to its factory or default settings. Attenuation, Frequency, Corrections, etc. are accessed via four configuration keys. These values can be entered and changed using the numeric keypad and or by using the cursor keys. Pressing the Setup key provides access to additional setup and configuration parameters. The front panel RF input and output ports can be used in either direction, that is from A to B or from B to A. Be sure, however, not to exceed the maximum input level of plus 30 dBm for continuous or CW signals. Next, let's look at the rear panel. The input and output connectors can optionally be installed on the rear of the RSC. Note that only one input-output pair can be installed at a time. There are also four connectors for controlling external attenuators. We'll go into more detail on this later in the presentation. A USB connector allows the attachment of a mouse, thumb drive, etc. And finally, the RSC can be remotely controlled using three types of interfaces, USB, LAN, and GPIB. This is another topic we'll come back to towards the end of the presentation. The main GUI of the RSC displays the operating parameters. The most important of these is the user-specified attenuation in dB. The frequency of operation should also be specified, since the effective attenuation will deviate slightly from the defined attenuation by a frequency-dependent amount. This frequency dependency can, however, be corrected by enabling correction mode and or through the use of user calibration. We'll explain all of these in detail on the next few slides. Note, too, that each attenuator controlled by the RSC, internal or external, has its own tab at the top of the screen, by which it's independently configured. Four hard keys are used to enter or configure the values we just looked at. The attenuator key is used to set attenuation via the numeric keypad and or cursor keys. Note that the step size when using cursors is also user configurable. And as mentioned earlier, the frequency of the signal should be set to account for frequency specific attenuation. Next to the numeric keypad, there are special unit keys, which enable frequency to be entered as gigahertz, megahertz, and kilohertz. The correction key is used to turn correction mode on and off. And finally, the select key is used to choose which of the internal or external attenuators is being configured and displayed. Let's now return to the main GUI and discuss deviation. During manufacture, correction data for each individual RSC is measured and stored in the instrument. The deviation parameter shows the difference between the user-configured attenuation value and the actual attenuation provided by the RSC. Note that the deviation will change with both changes in frequency 
as well as with changes in the configured attenuation. The amount of deviation between the configured and actual attenuation is usually quite small, but it can be further minimized by using something called correction mode. Correction mode is toggled on or off using the core hard key on the front of the RSC. When corrections are off, the RSC will apply the user configured attenuation setting, here 20 dB, but the actual attenuation will differ by the displayed deviation. If corrections are on, the RSC will make internal adjustments to minimize the deviation, and therefore the actual attenuation will be closer to the user configured attenuator setting. Note too that these values can be displayed relative to the attenuation at 0 dB or as an absolute value, as shown here. Toggling between relative and absolute attenuation, as well as other correction parameters, is configured by pressing the Setup Hard key and then Attenuator Correction Mode. The offset parameter can be used to account for or take into consideration any external attenuation. For example, here correction mode is on and an offset of 40 dB has been configured to take into account the external 40 dB attenuator. In this case, if the user enters an attenuation of 60 dB, the RSC will add only an additional 20 dB of attenuation so that the total combined attenuation from both the external offset and the internally added attenuation equals 60 dB. Note that this offset is a fixed attenuation across all frequencies. In order to have a frequency-specific external offset, a user calibration could be used. There are two types of user calibration. The first, AF, overwrites the data for residual attenuation. This is the attenuation from the RSC's internal cabling, connectors, etc. at different frequencies. Therefore, this type of calibration or correction can also be used to provide offset values for frequency specific external attenuation. Another type of user calibration is full, which overwrites all stored factory correction data. This essentially renormalizes the RSC and therefore would only be used in very uncommon situations. For both of these types of user calibration, the frequency response data is loaded using the Load File button. The files must be in CSV format with one entry for each frequency attenuation pair. These files can be loaded into the RSC from a USB drive attached to the rear panel of the RSC. Now let's come back to the topic of external attenuators. As mentioned earlier, the RSC supports up to four external attenuators in addition to its internal attenuator. The two external attenuator types are the RSC Z45, which goes up to 40 GHz, and the RSC Z67-5, which goes up to 67 GHz. These are attached to the rear panel of the RSC and are automatically detected when attached. Each attenuator can be individually configured and viewed through the main GUI using the select key to cycle through each attenuator's tab. Note too that correction data for each sensor is stored within the sensor and is automatically read when the sensor is attached. External attenuators can also be cascaded to achieve higher attenuation values than could be obtained with a single attenuator. For example, two RSC Z45 attenuators can be cascaded to achieve a total attenuation of 150 dB in 5 dB steps. When multiple attenuators are connected in series, they create a single logical attenuator. To configure this, press the Setup Hard key and then select Attenuator Cascade. Check boxes are then used to indicate which external attenuators should be combined into a single logical attenuator. The advantage of creating a cascade is that after configuration, these cascaded attenuators are configured as if they were a single attenuator. The final topic we'll cover is remote access or remote control. 
As mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, the RSC can be remotely accessed or controlled over three different interfaces, LAN or Ethernet, USB and GPIB. This remote control can also be done in three different ways. The first is by accessing the RSC's internal web server, which allows for basic configuration and status monitoring. The second is using the free VNC software client to remotely access the RSC's main GUI. And the third is programmatic control via industry standard Skippy commands. This method is most often used in test automation, especially when integrating the RSC with other instruments such as vector network analyzers. Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodian Schwartz RSC is a family of mechanical step attenuators with different models having different attenuation and frequency ranges. The RSC is easily configured via front panel keys and a simple graphical user interface. Offsets and frequency specific correction can be used to increase the precision of the user specified attenuation. The RSC can also configure and control up to four externally attached attenuators and these can be cascaded to increase the configurable attenuation range. And finally, in addition to using the GUI and front panel controls, the RSC can also be remotely controlled or automated using industry standard Skippy commands over LAN, USB, or GPIB. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the RSC Step Attenuator. If you're interested in learning more about related RF test and measurement topics or instruments from Rodian Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.